What's up Falcon fans? This is the recap video where we discuss what happened to the Atlanta Falcons. If you guys like this type of content, hit that like button. If you guys hate this type of content, hit that dislike button will hurt your boy's feelings. Well, maybe just a little bit. But also if you want to do a huge favor for your boy by hitting that subscribe button, it will help the empire grow. So on that note, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the Falcons. So let's get started with the good. Taylor Heineke coming into the second half of this game to upplug the Atlanta Falcons offensive power where we scoring 20 plus points in the previous first quarter and second quarter we only scored three points. So that's a good plus in my eyes. Him with the connection with Kadarius Hodge and with Scotty Miller on that touchdown was phenomenal and he could have gave it us a chance but of course um, Vaughn Jefferson dropped that but it is what it is at that point. But I'm very happy with the run game as well where we had 140 total rushing yards you know, 26 a carry to one touchdown to B. John Robertson for his first touchdown. So congratulations on that. And that's pretty much it, honestly. Well, besides Drake London, of course, I thought he did a pretty good job until he got nicked up. So now let's talk about the bad. Let's start out with the offense side of the ball. Um, I don't understand what the special teams uh, players were doing. I don't understand. I don't think anybody understand what the hell was that all about. You know, catching it in the 10 yard, you know, 15 yard in our own territory. Just let it bounce out. And I, I just, this not happened once, not twice, but three times or even four times. They were just constantly just grabbing. No, just get out of bounds. I don't understand. I've never seen the Lana Falcon special team ever do that. So that's something is a phenomenon. And hopefully that does not continue moving forward. Now let's talk about number two. This offensive line is continually giving up sacks, four plus average sacks per game. Um, Desmond Ritter got five sacks. Um, Heineke got one sack. And I don't blame Desmond Ritter for acting like that when he's doing so poorly because now he has to second guess himself because he doesn't have time in the pocket where he can see his first read, his second read, and maybe his third read if the first two are completely boxed out or in, in good coverage. And so now that kind of messed up with your mind. Even in the announcers were saying that Desmond Ritter was thinking, maybe hesitating, the reason why he took those sacks because he didn't want to make, you know, an interception or a forced fumble. Well, he didn't get any, and he didn't get no interceptions, but he did get a forced fumble, and it's just unfortunate for this guy, and I, this is not going to look good for him moving forward. Heineke did a little bit better because, you know, he is a veteran. He's been doing this a little longer, but if you really think about his stats-wise, 21 attempts, only 12 completions, 175 um, total passing yards and one touchdown. Not bad, but compared to what we witnessed in the first and second um, quarter, uh, yeah, it's, it's much improved. Now let's talk about number three. Play calling is still a major issue for the Atlanta Falcons offense. I don't know why Arthur Smith doesn't want to keep it simple. He wants to make everything fantastic. Trick plays. Um, um, sometimes when you're supposed to just run the ball, he doesn't run the ball. It's just mind-boggling. You know, you're a running team. And speaking of running team, Bijan Robinson, why are you having him outside at, you know, thinking he's a, a wide receiver no he's a running back you drafted him as a running back we didn't draft him to be a wide receiver this is ridiculous treat him as a running back and especially as a rookie running back stop giving him to do all these crazy things for us and what really kind of pissed me off, especially when we're at our 10 or 15 yard line, instead of doing the first play or maybe second play, just running the ball, you know, to get us a little bit more yardage on the field. No, Arthur Smith decided to just do passing. No, we are a running team. You establish the run first and then do play action. It's just, I don't understand the basics of what Arthur Smith is trying to do, but he's not doing it. It's, it's frustrating because... <laughs> I, I don't know, and I, I would love to ask Arthur Smith personally, why are we constantly throwing the ball first? If you want to bootleg and all that crazy palava, you start out establishing the run. That's that's basic one on one. I I know I'm not a, you know a coach or anything, and I probably don't know a lot more than they do. But I mean, the, the whole point of your offense is to establish the run, and when you run it well, then you get to do those bootlegs to get those individual one on one matchups. 
And the crazy thing is that we established, you know, the run game pretty early on in the first drive where we scored three points, where, you know, Desmond Ritter, Tyler Algier, B. John Robinson were running down the ball, and then we set up, you know, the play action where we got wide open coverage. But then our second, third, fourth, and fifth drive, we, you know, we ran the ball the first time, and then we abandoned it because of Desmond Ritter constantly getting pressured, getting sacks, and, you know, having incompletion, you know, on passing attacks, even though we didn't really need to do all that crazy palava because at the same time you know the Tennessee Titans weren't like you know scoring every touchdown they got the ball because remember they fumbled the first time got a punt and got a touchdown you know you know seven points but even still our defense was still holding up and because you know they were constantly getting punts punch and then a touchdown so it was 14 to 3 but it wasn't like the game was out of reach because we were still fighting so I don't understand you know why abandon the run so early on and that just shows you you know the ineptitude of Arthur Smith playing calling and it just bothers me so now let's talk about the defensive side of the ball first off we did hit the quarterback 11 times but a lot of those where he ran the ball you know outside of the pocket so if we take that into consideration it's the lack of pressure the lack of sacks the lack of making this young quarterback scared out of his mind to play like a true rookie quarterback but that didn't happen he played like a veteran quarterback I felt like I wasn't even watching a rookie quarterback that was drafted out of Kentucky um last year it felt like he'd been in the league for two years hell maybe even five years in, in that aspect because there was no fear in this man he did a lot of incredible fake plays where you thinking he was going one way but he was actually going another you know great he didn't hesitate a lot by the way he just knew where his targets were and that's probably on, on great uh, play calling as well so credit to that but it just didn't look like he felt uncomfortable in fact he looked very comfortable inside of the pocket and that's something that the Atlanta Falcons have constantly been lacking in the quarterback department when we're trying to get after the quarterback and making them look stupid he had 29 attempts 19 completions 238 you know passing yards and four touchdowns and you know what I did like how we kind of shut him down but honestly that was because of the play calling was so bad in my personal opinion where they didn't try to go for it to get those extra chunks but my god we could not stop you know D hop giving him three touchdowns where he didn't have a single touchdown this entire season I mean that's unacceptable I guess let's talk about D hop okay we all know the first um, touchdown that should have been a, a penalty flag on him offensive fairance um that's not on AJ Terrell the second touchdown great play by him and you know will Levis to see that for incredible touchdown but now the third touchdown that's something that I just don't agree with on how he got that first of all bad defensive coverage by the way you know not even pressuring him not trying to you know bump him up you know allowing you know, AJ Terrell and the other I think it was uh, the linebacker I'm giving a wide open space and then you're allowing your safety you know to try to beat up no a safety's job is a supporting role a safety job is not to take on the best wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans that's stupid that's not how a safety works a safety is a a, a covering a covering blanket to making sure that if the corner mess up he got his back that's not how that works. So bad defensive call. I don't blame this on Richie Grant. Um, D Hop just did his thing. He got. He just abused the crap out of this defensive play call. So whoever did that, that's on them, not on the players. Let's get that right, okay? And then of course, like I said in my preview video, we have to stop the run. Well, we didn't do that, you know. You know, Derrick Henry, the king, got over 100 yards. In total, they got like a, a 149 uh, total rushing yards. So, yeah, I mean, you can't stop the run and you can't stop the pass. And so that gives them a great incredible to do a lot of these play action, bootleg plays. And you know what? I have to give a credit for Will Levis. He did a fantastic job and just chucking it down the field, giving, you know, the wide receivers. I can't rename that one dude that beat, you know, Jesse Bates. I don't know his name, but that was an incredible, you know, play call on the, on the, off, on, oh, man, I just like, it's just unfortunate. You know, this Atlanta Falcons defense has been playing so well. But then they're acting up like the old Atlanta Falcons defense where you're just giving up these touchdowns. 
to like no name guys. Of course, you know, you know, D Hop is no name, but D Hop hasn't been acting like D Hop, you know, since he was with Houston. But you're, it felt like D Hop was like back in 2015 through 2017, where he was just bawling out on against everybody. Oh my god, man, I, I I'm stunned for words because I don't I, I don't really blame the players. I mostly blame the uh, um, uh, you know play calling and then also the refs. I mean, come on, the refs. I feel like the refs. I, I'm not gonna say they got paid to to cheat, but it felt like you know a lot of things were going not our way, and unfortunately that was just the case. Of course, there's a lot more things we could definitely talk about, but I don't think people really want to relive this right now. Um, just, just know that the opportunities were there, and we let it slip again. So now let's talk about the Falcons. Yeah. Honestly, the Falcons' uh, third down conversions really showed why we didn't win this game. You know, 4 out of 15, not a really good look. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, comes to first down conversions, you know, we had 17 in total, you know, uh, 12 passing and then, you know, four rushing, you know, it should be the opposite usually because we are supposed to be a running team. But even still, you know, the Atlanta Falcons have lost some pretty bad games, you know, I guess you can make the argument, you know, the Lions and the Jaguars are really good teams. So obviously, we don't lose to those games. But compared to the Washington Commanders and now this game, it's like, what what do the Falcons want to do? Are they trying to establish a winning culture? I think so. But unfortunately, you cannot lose to bad teams. You're supposed to win those games, and you're supposed to also beat the really great teams as well to prove that you are established winning culture and you could beat any team no matter what the situation is. But unfortunately, when you lose to a 2-3 and three Washington Commander team that gives up 30 plus points per game, and then when you only score 16 points, that's very alarming. And when you lose to a 2-4 and four Tennessee Titans team, no offense to them because they don't have a quarterback, you should abuse that. You should take full advantage of your opportunities, and the Atlanta Falcons just didn't do that. You let this rookie quarterback go ape ham on you to score four touchdowns, regardless if it's fair or not, or whatever you know the situation was. At the end of the day, on paper, you allowed them to score four touchdowns and get them this game. In fact, this was their best game all season. At the end of the day, I know some people are going to make excuses for this team. I don't care. I'm tired of all that crap. Believe me, because I've been making excuses for them too for the past two seasons. It's either good teams find a way to win and bad teams find a way to lose. So which are the Atlanta Falcons at this point in the direction? Yes, even though it is eight games already. But remember, the season is halfway almost over at this point in juncture. So will the Atlanta Falcons can actually win this division and make it to the playoffs because if they can that's great but I don't want them just to make it to the playoffs I want them to win the Super Bowl because they do have a good roster on their hands they have a good defense they have a good offense coaching I don't know about that but they are capable of winning the golden goose that lays the golden eggs my boys I guess what I'm truly saying is that I believe in this team can be great but unfortunately they haven't shown us consistently that they can that's what I mean I won't give up on this team until the very end like in like in 10 hundred years from now when I'm dead but on that note if you guys lasted this long to the very end of the video thank you so much for taking your own personal time and day to watch these Falcon content videos I like making videos for you guys here's more on the screen if you guys are interested in so what do Falcons do rise up until the next episode show love and peace of the world and peace